Neil Jackson played 11 seasons and 156 matches for the Richmond Tigers of the AFL, and now he's the assistant coach for the Canada Northern Lights women's team, which is about to play uh, here in Fort Lauderdale against the USA Freedom. And Daniel, uh, what made you get involved in international footy? It's quite funny. Um, everyone back home that knows me well would know that whilst I was a footballer by profession, I, uh, I tried to fill my spare time with non-footballing things just to have that balance. But since retiring and moving overseas, I've had that one little vacuum in my life, which has been there for such a long time, and that is footy. Uh, so when I moved to Toronto a few months ago, I, uh, I knew the head coach, Jason, at, uh, at the girls' side, and uh, he just got me involved just to sort of come down and help out. And since then, it's sort of snowballed a little bit more, and now here I, here I am as the assistant midfield coach and runner of, the, of this great side. So it's, it's been a slow journey to build in, but it's been very exciting. A man who can multitask, I like that. <laughs> um, now, you mentioned that you had, and you previously were uh, uh, involved with the French team as well, correct? The International Cup? That's right. So our schedule's pretty busy during the year when we play, but uh, managed to find a few hours and a few half days over the last two international cups. Um, and I met the French team a few years ago through a uh, third party with them and a friend of mine and I, I, I'm a French speaker from I went to a French school when I was a kid so it was a, a personal interest to go and practice that but mm -hmm. I, ended up, I ended up discovering that there was a, a real passion for football outside of Australia which a lot of Australians don't realise. You know, we know that it's our uh, national game, it's the be all end all of, of Australian sport mm -hmm. but outside we don't think anyone even knows they think it's that crazy game that Aussies, Aussies play. <laughs> but, uh, I was, I was just amazed at the passion that these French guys showed. Like they, they watched footy, they knew the players, and when they played, they played with their, with their heart and soul. I've had spent some time in the States as well. I met the Portland Steelheads, and it was just the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I've had to start to get some real exposure about what football is to people overseas. And since I've sensed that, I've really wanted to sort of share as much knowledge as I could just to help them be more passionate. No, you know, no goal or agenda for me. I, I get to meet some great people. I get to travel to some cool places. But I just love seeing other people um, cherish the game like you know, like I have and all my old teammates have back home for so long. What surprised you most about about the seeing the game played over here? I think the uh, the, the difference between the North American football, both Canada and, and in the States, compared to Europe, is in Europe they all get stuck on small grounds, where obviously the benefit over here, you get this beautiful ground out here, guys actually learn to play and girls on proper football in a real size ground. Mm -hmm. But that can sometimes have trouble, you know, you put junior kids in Australia on a bigger ground they get a bit lost. So I've been really impressed with the, uh, the way the, the girls and the guys have been able to pick up the nuances of how football is played. Kicking is a hard skill, handballing is a weird skill, marking is complicated, but funnily enough, the hardest thing in AFL footy or in any Aussie rules is le le learning how to get the ball. It's such mm -hmm. a big field out there. But these guys have no trouble. I don't know if it's because they're watching footy, they're just really quick learners, or they've got some good teachers, but yeah. uh, they, they, they're all finding the footy, they're getting, st they're getting their touches, and they, uh, they all use it really well. I watched the games last night, the development uh, games, uh, the men's before the women's, and then obviously I was involved in, in ours. I was really impressed with the, the passages of play. That right. they, they moved the ball out to the, out to the uh, flanks, they cut back through the corridor, they had handball receives, the forwards led, all things that you just wouldn't assume would be at that kind of level, especially for a development game. So bloody excited for, uh, to see what the, the top teams can do. Wasn't the hardest thing for me to learn was not getting tackled. Um, uh, one last question real quick. Uh, let's give some thoughts on the game tonight. Yeah, you've had a chance, obviously, the last couple of months to coach these girls. Uh, what, what are you expecting tonight? Yeah, like I said, last night's game that far exceeded my expectations about what we do from both sides. The US girls and the Canadian girls put on a real show. It was really impressive football. I'm really excited to see what that next level of experience and maturity can, can deliver. So I know the skills are going to be better. I know the decision making is going to be a bit better. But it's that extra level of intensity and experience that I'm, I'm kind of going into realms that I, that I haven't seen before. So uh, I've seen how excited out the Canadian girls are. I'm sure the US girls are revved up as well. And then, of course, we've got the men's game afterwards. And yep. uh, I'll definitely be hanging around to watch that. I've done a little bit with the Canadian guys and I think I've met a few of the US guys as well and I, I know they take this game seriously so I'm expecting there'll be a few big hits and uh, maybe a bit of a hustle and bustle here and there and a bit of pure football on the side so it's going to be exciting. Fantastic. Well Daniel, thanks so much for sitting down with us. Best of luck tonight and best of luck the rest of the way on the way to IC17. Thanks for having me. Thanks Daniel. Take care.